So let's go ahead and set this sump pit. We've already perforated the pit by drilling holes all around the bottom and the sides. Now we're cutting off this nipple, and this nipple will be the inlet for that downspout drain right there. We always attach a downspout to our system if it's close by. Next, we're going to drill an inlet into the pit. This is much lower, but this is bringing the catch basins there that we're installing by the driveway into the pit. Now I'm going to plumb the sump pump. Basically I'm making some measurements using my hacksaw cutting inch and a half pipe because that's the size of the discharge as it comes out of the pump, although we will switch to two inch right away to help this flow a little easier to the street. Cut your pipe, clean your burrs. Next thing I'm going to do is attach the check valve. And the check valve allows water to only flow one way. This way, as the pump kicks on, because it is uphill all the way to the street, we don't want that water to run back into the pit, into our pump. It helps save the pump, it helps save the impeller. It just makes your pump last a lot longer. Tighten up the no hubs. These are just clamps. Next, I'm going to cut a small riser coming from the check valve where we'll put a 90 and it will come out through the middle of the pit. A good hacksaw is a real plus when you're doing work with PVC. Make sure you have a good sharp blade and you can cut right through this stuff. Now I'm going to dry fit all of these connections into the sump pit. I apologize, I've got a GoPro on my head, and so it moves around a lot as I turn and look for parts and things like that. So now we're ready to tighten the clamp onto the no hub. Using a 5 16 inch bit with just a small handheld drill. We can tighten that clamp quite quickly. Have your glue handy or have someone hand it to you. And we're ready to set our riser. Now we're just making the measurement. And you can see that I'm a little bit too high. This is just barely below the surface. And I want this discharge to be very safe and underground. You see my thumb there, it's just too high on the side of the pit, even though that would be underground. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit deeper. So again, I've only dry fitted things and I can easily pull them apart. I'm going to cut off about a couple inches here of the riser from the discharge of the pump and replumb this so that it's a little bit deeper. Working in PVC is actually pretty easy, so as long as you cut things longer, it's pretty easy to make an adjustment. If you cut things short, then you have a problem. Now that's much better. Now I'm going to take a 2 inch hole saw and drill a hole for the discharge in the side of the pit. I'm basically right above the inlet line now. So this is much deeper and will be much more secure and safe. Even though PVC is quite strong, we just don't want someone to take a shovel and break this pipe. So drill a hole for your discharge of the sump pump. And double check it. Just slide your piece of PVC through. Make sure that it's ready to be secured and glued. Now we're ready to go ahead and glue all the pieces together. Always apply a good amount of glue. We're going to slide this on down into the bottom, tie it together into the pump, twist and turn, push and hold. Next comes the 90. Good amount of glue, push and hold. And we're basically ready to finish plumbing out to the street.
Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're replacing a sump pump that has been down in an old pit. And this pit was made out of a 55 gallon drum. And you can see the lid off there to the side, pretty rusty. Um, what we're doing right now is we're cutting out the old wires from the old pump. We've already pumped the pit out and pulled that pump. But they ran the wires for the sump pump through the inlet pipe. So we've got to remove that. Take that old pump away. The next thing that we do is we're going to drill a new hole through the pit for our new pump's electric rather than send it through the old pipe there, make it a little bit better. Now we're going to go ahead and install the sump pump and you've seen lots of videos from us about how to set your pump up, but we'll do it again. Basically we're going to put our riser onto the sump pump. We've already got our inch and a half adapter uh, tightened down onto the pump. We're going to glue a piece of pipe down into that adapter. And then we're going to cut it off just right above that bar. That's where we'll set our check valve. Here's the check valve and you can see the arrows that are pointing up. We want that arrows pointing up because we don't want water to come back down this line. This pump is going to pump this water up a hill about 20 feet high and out to the street. It's about 60 or 70 feet away. So we don't want all that water coming back down into the pit. Install your check valve. Tighten up the no hubs. We're using a 5 16 inch bit with the handheld drill. Set the pump down into the pit. What we're doing now is we're going to make a measurement to connect our pipe, our riser, to the discharge that's already underground going out to the street. This isn't that hard to do. Um, you really just have to make a measurement with your finger. And you'll see I'm just going to pull that pipe up. And right there at the top of the coupling, we want to make a little measurement. We'll transfer that measurement and we'll use our hacksaw to cut it off. I usually just hold my finger in place, pull the pump back out. Just keep your finger tight right there, then find your hacksaw. You know, I'm using a GoPro on my head, so it turns around a lot, and I apologize for that. A good hacksaw cut right through that PVC. Now we're ready to install. We want to clean off all the pipe. Remember that this was underwater and it's very muddy out here and it's very cold. It might not look like it, but it's about 12 degrees. So we're going to clean off the fittings. You can just use your finger if you have a rag handy, that works too. Clean off those fittings. Find your glue. You can see how muddy it is all around that pit. It's been overflowing for quite some time. The old pump was not working. Apply your glue. Set your 90 in place. Push and hold. Now let's set that pump down into the pit again. Notice I'm using a string. The string is there just in case, for whatever reason, you can't reach it. Um, you can use that string to just pull it out. Clean off the outlet, the discharge inch and a half pipe. Make sure it's good and clean. You can see me really cleaning that pipe off. Again, it's really cold here, so the glue has really gotten clumpy and we've got to get to the good part of that glue so it takes a minute to get a lot of glue onto the little sponge ball there. Apply a good amount of glue onto the fitting. Push and hold. Make sure it's tight. That install is done. Last thing to do really is 
you know, we like to make a clean installation. We're going to put our wire through the hole that we drilled. They've already got a GFI outlet installed. And finally, I'm just going to go ahead and tie up that cord. Um, <clears throat> we'll take the string off the pump there. We want to make that the cord off the pump secure so that it doesn't interfere with the float. I usually just tie it onto the top of the pipe there. Oh, got to answer the phone. <laughs> nah, just kidding. If you look carefully down in there, you'll notice on the inlet line, there is a lot of tree roots that have grown through this pipe. I don't know how old that pipe is, probably several years, but we're going to have to clean that line here when we're all done. Right now we're just tightening up that cord, making it nice and secure. And again, we'll just tie that to the top of the pipe, the outlet there, so that the cord doesn't interfere with the float. This pump is a Zoller M53. It's a one-third one horsepower, and it pumps about 60 gallons a minute. It can easily lift the water up here, out of this pit, up the 20-foot hill, and all the way out to the street. Granted, you'll never beat Mother Nature. Of course it will rain so hard someday that the, the pump won't keep up. But for the most part, in average rainfalls, one or two inch, this is going to easily keep up with the discharge here. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're going to replace this sump pump. This is a Zoller M53, a third of a horsepower. It pumps about 40 to 60 gallons a minute. But the reason that we're replacing that, you'll notice that we're out here in the yard, and you can see back in here, during the last big rain that was here, this area was totally flooded and uh, this pump just couldn't keep up. So we're going to try to put a larger pump in here. It still won't beat Mother Nature, but it should definitely help out quite a bit. So we start by using our handy dandy drill, loosen up the check valve. And we're going to pull this apart if it'll come and pull our pump out of here. Just follow me up. I'm going to set it right in front of you. So that's why I kind of just need to stand up. That's good. There you go. <clears throat> and you can see this is Zoller M53. What we're going to do is put a new pump in here. This is a half horsepower, it's also a Zoller, cast iron body. <clears throat> We're going to set that up here. This just pump sets up the same way as all the Zollers. We've got a male inch and a half adapter. It just screws right in here. And then we'll tighten this all up when we're done. We've already loosened up the band on the check valve, so we're going to reuse that. Use all the bands again. What we have to do is make a measurement once we set this down in the pit make a measurement from there up to our discharge line. up to our discharge line right here so let's set our pump down in here first let's do it one more time wasn't there a song called do it won't do it to me baby one more time <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys something in my head there <clears throat> let's make a measurement from here to the bottom of the check valve That way we've got a real good connection. That would have been Helen Reddy. Helen, Helen Reddy. <laughs> good hacksaw is the key to cutting PVC. And we want to dry fit this and make sure it fits properly. You need to come up higher so you can see the bottom of the pit. Got it. Okay. Looks like we've got a really good fit here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the bottom and then we'll fit the, the check valve onto the pump, onto the discharge. Remember when you lift up your pumps, you can see the handle here. Try not to lift up your cord and rip it apart. 
our riser. Put lots of glue around it. And we're gonna set it right inside our inch and a half male adapter. Twist and hold. Perfect. So we're putting our check valve on. You'll notice we got our arrows. We want those to point upwards. And I'm gonna go ahead and secure this onto the riser first. Just make sure your clamp stays good and tight and square. <laughs> And there's one. Now, you can see this is a tight fit. We've got to raise this all up and pull it together. But if you pull a little bit of weight on it, you should be able to do it. Because it is a rubber no hub. Almost. There we go. Now all we have to do is tighten this clamp up with our handy dandy drill. Just barely have enough room to get in here. Nice and secure. <clears throat> That's really about it. So we just replaced, we upgraded the pump to a half horsepower. It's going to pump a few more gallons a minute and hopefully this area will stay dry. Okay, so we've got it hooked up. Let's see if we got power. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a lot more powerful pump. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.